Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to uh, SEO.academy. Uh, we have with us our uh, favorite lead developer from Websites Depot. Uh, welcome Nick Jeffers. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, good, good. Yeah, uh, thank you for you know taking your time to be part of our uh, SEO Academy, uh, teaching our students, uh, small business owners, uh, basics about the internet. You know, uh, like we got, uh, heard the news that right now uh, people in Russia are teaching uh, um, people from, you know, they used to do like labor, they're teaching a technology, uh, you know, employ, uh, founded by Vladimir Putin himself. Uh, very interested. So I guess what we are doing, we're doing good here too. Uh, we prepare a couple questions. I mean, you know, it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you. But since you, you know, you're a lead developer for. Uh, one of a prominent web agency in, uh, in Silver Lake Websites Depot. Uh, tell us mo more about uh, you know your job. Like, what does lead developer actually do uh, every day, day to day basis? Uh, basically, I'm in charge of making sure things go smoothly. Um, you know, if I need to help step in to kind of make sure you know if there's any issues with the website or any functionality that other other people can't figure out or other developers can't figure out. Basically, I'm. I am the go-to person. If there's any trouble, it's it's my job to fix any any issues or solve any problems. Okay, so, uh, so, so some people call you uh, WordPress Google. Uh, I hear I hear that's a nickname for you in the office. Uh, you know, we can just imagine what WordPress Google means. Um, so uh, let's go back to the you know to the questions that our uh, students at SEO dot Academy uh, are asking us. Uh, basically, they are asking us. Why they should choose uh, WordPress as a, as a main uh, platform for their small business? Why they shouldn't choose Wix or Weebly or um, let's say um, Squarespace or you know what? What would you suggest or recommend WordPress for them? Uh, well, WordPress. There's with any platform. There's there's going to be a lot of pros and cons. Um, WordPress, for example, a lot of things that it has going for it is it's the most popular platform that is on the internet right now. Um, about one out of every four new domains that are created are built on WordPress. Um, so that's a huge, huge number when you look at the grand scheme of things. Um, because of this, um, you have a lot of pros on that site, such as it's very popular. And with popularity comes both good and bad. Uh, one of the good things is it has a very big community of people working on it, uh, you know, fixing bugs, fixing security issues, um, creating new things, um, you know, creating new solutions. Um, it's just a very active community. If you have a problem, there's definitely somebody there that can solve it. And uh, that's that's pretty much the, the main pro that I can have on there. Um, it is open source, so you can see all the code. If you are a developer, it's, it helps with development. <laughs> <laughs> open source. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's, there's that. Um, and generally, if there's a problem, if you have any kind of custom work that needs done or any kind of solution that other platforms might be locked down on that, there's always a way to make it. If, it's, if it can be done, it can probably be done in WordPress. Okay, uh, that's uh, very interested and uh, um, it's true that there's most of the websites on the internet are built in WordPress. Uh, so we, we totally agree with, with, with Nick's statements. Uh, we do support WordPress as a number one platform uh, for small business owners uh, most of the time. Um, how, how many times uh, would you guys, you know, if you guys have uh, 100 websites to build in, in the next 30, 40 days or, you know, next couple months, how many of those 100 websites that you guys build will be uh, built in WordPress platform? Out of 100, probably 80 to 85 is probably a pretty good number. Okay, so what are the other platforms that you guys usually build sites on besides WordPress? Um, depending on what solution they need, whether it's an informational site for maybe a small business, medium business, or if it's maybe e-commerce, you know, maybe you're selling some things. It, it all depends on, um, you know, budget, um, how many products you have. For example, if this was e-commerce, um, some of the larger, larger e-commerce sites would need something actually outside of WordPress, which is Magento, which is really good e-commerce platform when you have heavyweight, um, you know, big shopping uh, platforms, you know, with many, many, like thousands of products um, would go with uh, Magento. Um, if you had something lighter, like, you know, just normal 15 to 50 kind of products, you know, something on the lower end, uh, WordPress is definitely plenty for you. Okay. Um, on the other hand, uh, Nick, we would like to hear from you. Uh, you're, an, you know, an expert in, in, uh, in the web uh, development and design. Um, 
sometimes people would like to choose between WordPress and Shopify or WordPress and Magento. Like, uh, what is your decision based off, or what would you recommend? You know, our our listeners and uh, watchers on our YouTube channel. What, what should they consider? You know, Shopify we know has a monthly fee mm -hmm. as low as seventy-nine dollars per month. Uh, WordPress, as you mentioned, is an open source. Uh, for some of you that don't know what open source stands for, uh, believe it or not, a lot of people ask this question. Open source is basically open in the market that everybody can access it and everybody can modify the code. It's not, uh, you know, it doesn't come with the monthly fees or uh, copyright infringements and stuff like that. So, uh, and then on the other hand, you know, we have Magento, which is again an open source for community, and then is like, you know, that uh, special uh, edition uh, that is, you know, ten thousand plus. Uh, what, what would you recommend them when they, they don't know what to choose? What would the decision be based off? Um, well, partially off of the number of products, um, you know, for the Magento portion, definitely. Um, if you don't need anything that heavy, then it's kind of a WordPress versus Shopify, probably for the main two platforms. Um, they both have different approaches. Um, WordPress, as Danny mentioned, is um, free and open. There's no like monthly fee for it. Where at Shopify, you have to pay that monthly fee. Um, WordPress is is better. WordPress is better with an actual overall site, like if you wanted pages and content, um, it's, it supports that better than Shopify would. Um, Shopify also has uh, part of the, the payment methods, if you wanted, say, uh, what are some? Sorry, I'm drawing a blank on yeah. some payment methods right now, but uh, credit payment, cards yeah, or credit yeah, card processing, American pay, Express. You know, yeah. So depending on your your payment processor, some of those things are actually extra as part of WordPress as plugins. Um, a lot of those are included as part of Shopify, so that is a nice part um, if you are going the Shopify method. Um, Shopify also includes SSL uh, is built in. It is kind of a mixed bag on that because of the way that Shopify implements SSL. Uh, the checkout is all. It's shared, if you will. It's it's kind of hard to explain on you know uh, over film, but uh, WordPress you can have it built into your actual site. Whereas when you do the Shopify checkout process, when people go to check out the the website, it takes you to a special page. It's actually on Shopify. It's not part of your website. So sometimes uh, cu potential customers get confused and they might drop off from the website there. So that's one con on the Shopify side. But again, some of those things are handled for you, so it's a little bit more plug and play. Okay, um, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, what, what he was mentioning basically is, uh, you know, we I, I deal with a lot of those issues when somebody checks out and let's say you have a domain myshop.com and then customer go and check out with a credit card. What will happen is the checkout would redirect them check out .shopify.com so there won't be any more your store.com um, so that's a very good point uh, and uh, you know uh, like he mentioned Shopify does have uh, you know uh, built in uh, uh, per, uh, uh, merchant gateway which is an add-on uh, but then again, you know the merchant merchants are with the monthly fees, so it's it's up to you guys what you guys you choose. And also, like he mentioned, depends on number of products. Uh, if if we ask you the details, uh, Nick, how would you say number of products? I mean, if I have let's say a thousand products, do I go for this option? If I have like a ten thousand products, I go for that option. If I'm like a startup with a two products, like uh, how, how would you determine number of products? to be the decision maker for the platform? Uh, partially number of products and partially price. Uh, depending on those two, uh, you kind of want to... I would I would consider WordPress probably to be a better option for most. Um, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Fit all. Um, if you're going to about... If you're going in the 10,000 kind of range like that, you definitely need something like Magento. Shopify can handle pr pretty much the same as WordPress on the amount of products. So if you're not a super, super large store like that, you should be able to choose either Shopify or WordPress if those two, you know, depending on the pros and cons of each, but something a lot larger than that. And like he said about the 10,000 range, uh, you definitely need something larger and more serious with e-commerce, which is Magento. Okay. Um, thank you. A lot of our uh, students at SEO.academy are uh, asking us uh, how much should a uh, good WordPress responsive uh, site 
just information on site without e-commerce that we talk about right now, but let's say just some small law attorney office with you know two employees. Uh, they would like to have a website that works on mobile, that works on tablet, that is so responsive, that is fast, that you know sends the emails, that they can tap on the phone number and they call they, they call the office. What, what would you recommend? What, what would their budget have to be? Should they hire a company like yours? Or should they just try to go to WordPress.com and build themselves? What would you what would you recommend for them to do in, in that situation for some small law, law office or a small auto repair shop or a small you know dental office? What would you recommend? Um, I would recommend going. Um, I would recommend about probably about two thousand dollars or so is probably a good range to get a really good. Uh, WordPress site, you know, an informational one. Um, E-commerce is naturally a, a bit more behind that. Uh, just in regards to the responsive thing, uh, responsive is relatively new. Um, a lot of developers are kind of being pushed that way because of Google. Uh, but most most view, uh, most visitors are from mobile devices anyway, um, and there's a lot more testing and things like that that go into it. So there is a bit of time. Um, you can always try to do it yourself, uh, but there's a lot of little things that have been learned over time. You know, for most developers, uh, things to look out for um, issues and potential you know issues with forms, for example, or issues on mobile. Uh, you know, the, something's overhanging because you tried to code it yourself. Uh, so th those kind of things we have had clients come to us with those. Uh, so those are things that we we do on a daily basis. So we know about all those issues. They're they're a daily routine for us. Uh, so a lot of those things that you might have to worry about are, are kind of already taken care of if if we were to handle something like that. Uh, understood. So uh, two thousand dollars. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's less when you know usually you know somebody makes in California every month. So it's a uh, it's a sophisticated budget. But then. If in, let's say if I browse on Craigslist right now and I'm looking here at the Craigslist mm -hmm. and you know there's guys offering you know WordPress site for four hundred dollars or five hundred dollars you know mm -hmm. so why you know n number one like what would you say as an expert because you've dealt with so many people that have built five hundred dollar websites and then they came here crying <laughs> to you say hey you know nothing is working mm -hmm. uh, why w what is the main difference between five hundred dollar site and a two thousand dollar site and wh why wouldn't why wouldn't you recommend them to go with, with the cheap web design and they should choose you instead of them? Like that? Well, us personally as a company, we have a whole dedicated team uh, working together that's you know kind of involved on the project. Whereas something on Craigslist with freelance would probably just be somebody who you might meet at Starbucks. Uh, so there's there's that you have a full team working there. Um, also, when it comes down to pretty much anything, you know, uh, time is money. Uh, so the more time you can put into something, the better. Obviously, the end product's going to be. Um, number two, I, I can't speak for this individual freelancer in the example, so I don't know how much experience they have. Uh, I know that we have quite a bit. Uh, so there's there's that, um, and just when there's no budget there, it's kind of hard to to for you know anybody to spend time on anything. Um, you know you don't want to have some half baked product. You want to if you're going to pay for something, you want to make sure that it's you know a good return on investment. You know the contact forms are working, that they put the proper phone number in there, that people can even call you. Uh, you know we've had customers before where they they didn't even realize their phone you know their phone number was wrong on the website. Uh, that contact forms weren't coming through. Uh, there's there's so many different issues that can be there, and those are those turn into a loss of sales in the end so in the end it's really not worth it you're actually losing money with some of those if you know if you do go the cheaper route um, there's just not enough time to make sure everything's done properly um, absolutely so remember yeah like Nick said you know you don't want your business to look cheap mm -hmm. you don't want to have a cheap website and then uh, you know have a loss of opportunity loss of sales making the decision based on the price for, for your website um, uh, on the other hand, let's talk more about, okay, so we know now WordPress, we have options e-commerce, we know the price, we know what to choose an agency or the group of people, a team, and not choose a freelancer. Um, we can talk more about it absolutely uh, down the road from some other, other videos. If you can subscribe to our channel, we'll see more videos are coming. Um, we'd like to talk about some SEO stuff, like why is WordPress good for SEO, which plugins would you recommend for, you know, let's say I'm already a, a small business owner, I have a, a you know, WordPress site, SEO expert Dan is on, on WordPress, uh, which plugins would you recommend for us to use, uh, which part of SEOs are important, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, 
what would you recommend us to you know to maintain on monthly basis uh, having this WordPress platform? Uh, for SEO, the the gold standard, if you will, for for SEO on WordPress is uh, is actually called Yoast. Um, it's a very simple plugin. It's you pretty much just install and activate it, and it, it does a lot for you. It's, it's actually really good. Uh, they do have some premium add-ons for that. Uh, whether or not you need them, it's it's up to you. But most of the time, most of the time, the free one is actually fine. Oh yeah, he has the spelling here. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's one that's like the primary the primary one I would think. Uh, but there are other additional ones like uh, Broken Link Checker is an amazing one uh, that that kind of lets you know like you know when you're building content for example say you're writing your own blog post and you're linking to different pages on your site or even other sites completely um, it will it'll basically keep an eye on your whole website and let you know if any of those links are broken which is um, as as you know, may or may not know about SEO, uh, WordPress or Google Google does not like 404s, which are broken links. Uh, so it's very good, especially if you're linking to your own content. You're you're basically just just shooting yourself in the foot if you have broken links to your own stuff. So thank you very much. So those are important plugins. Remember SEO Yoast, uh, broken link checker. There's uh, more. I, uh, I'm just blanking a little yeah. bit. Right now. So uh, they also also handles the sitemap, right? So yeah, that's, sitemap that's is That's very important. Is so good. the sitemap is always dynamic, created. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. Um, now uh, let's talk about speed, right? We you know uh, we've been together at Google last year. Remember, uh, mm -hmm. Google has expressed how speed was important at a, at a Google Summit in Silicon Valley. So would like to you know share with our students, uh, you know so they, they 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 have that perception that. Oh, let me get high resolution picture, 4,000 DPI times, you know, 4,000 pixels times 2,000 pixels, 350 DPI's. Like this, have still that old school mentality that we're gonna print these pictures in catalog or magazines, and you know, and then they come to us, and you know, there's like, why is my bounce rate so high? Like, what, my, why is my website taking so long to load? Uh, I, I think it's a WordPress, or I think it's a Magento, or you know, uh, what would you? say about the speed, uh, what should our students be ready, you know, um, um, what should they pay attention to when they're like uploading the, the images and stuff like that when it comes to keeping that, you know, size of the site light and work fast on the internet. Yeah, um, as, as Danny mentioned, uh, speed is a very, very crucial thing and part of that uh, is basically because as visitors are more and more coming from mobile devices, they might not be attached to high speed internet. You know, they might be stuck somewhere, you know, bigger cities don't usually have such a problem, but you know, maybe if you're somewhere outside the big city, you might have 3G or even 2G, um, you know, as your internet connection for your phone. Um, so speed is very, very important to mobile users, especially as third world countries are getting more into smartphones, you know. Uh, so Google's, Google knows that and they're ahead of the ball on that. So speed is very important. Um, as Danny pointed out, you don't want to go overboard on it used to be more of like a fireworks grandiose so you know let's have like the best images that you can on there um, it's not necessarily the case anymore you kind of need to think mobile first now about your mobile viewers because those visitors are going to be probably the core of your you know core of your visitors are going to be coming from mobile so you need to consider your largest user base uh, for that what you want to do is try to keep things trimmed